Hello everyone and welcome to MES's e-learning channel. In this tutorial, we will be learning what is fixed bias configuration of C transistor, which is also called as base bias. Basically, there are three types of biasing techniques, which is fixed bias, self bias and voltage divider bias. So, uh, in fixed bias, we can see that in all these three terminals, this is a BJT, which has three terminals, collector terminal, base terminal and emitter terminal. So across the collector terminal, we have a resistor connected in series. Across base terminal over here, we can see there is a resistor connected. But in the emitter terminal, there is no resistor present. Okay. So this configuration, fixed bias configuration is also called as base bias. So essentially, when you are studying, you should keep in mind there are three different techniques. So you should be able to distinguish between all of these three techniques. So I'll give you a simple idea. You should remember that this resistor RC, which is connected, which is across your collected terminal, is going to be present in all the three configurations. So that is fixed. And since this is base bias, there is going to be a resistor RB present in your base terminal. So since this is base bias, there is a resistor connected to your base terminal. Since it is connected to base terminal B, we have named it as RB. And since this resistor is connected to collector terminal C, we have named it RC. Okay? And there is no resistor present here in the emitter terminal. Okay? So this is fixed bias. Also, what all currents are flowing? So a from the collector terminal, we can see current IC is flowing. You have to see at the direction of the current, you have to look at the arrow. So arrow is flowing inwards, so this is incoming current IC. There is this current IB flowing through base terminal, IB, this is also an incoming current. And IE is your emitter current, which is flowing outwards, your, uh, it is flowing outwards from your emitter terminal. So these are the three currents which are present. And also there are two voltages. So input voltage is across your base terminal and emitter terminal. So we have voltage VBE, voltage across base and emitter terminal. This is your input voltage. And we have output voltage VCE, which is across collector and emitter terminal. So voltage across collector and emitter VCE is nothing but your output voltage. So all of these things we have represented over here. Also, a DC voltage plus VCC is applied to the circuit at the top, which is between the base and collector. Okay. So now, if you see the diagram, this potential or this voltage VCC is, a, is at point potential. So this voltage VCC, which is connected to your ba between your vo uh, base and collector, is nothing but the voltage over here and the voltage over here. So I have redrawn the diagram on my right hand side. So if you compare both the diagrams, both are same. Only difference is that this line has been erased. So there is no connecting line or a wire over there. And this potential or this voltage VCC is present at this point. It is present at this point and it is present at this point. So that is we ha what we have shown, plus VCC and plus VCC. Okay, so that is what is there. So it is nothing but the same diagram. Now when we do the analysis of this fixed bias configuration, or any configuration of biasing for that matter, we have to find out two parameters. One is IC and second is VCE. Now what is IC? IC is nothing but your output current. And VCE is nothing but the output voltage. So we are interested in finding out what is the output current and what is the output voltage. So we will be finding IC and VCE. Now from this circuit, we have to find out these two parameters. Now how do we find out? So to find out these two values, we have to know KVL. It is Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now, how we will apply KVL? So before we go to that, let's see how we can form a loop over here. Now if you see, we have positive voltage VCC. 
so this is external dc supply okay so basically if this is positive if you know external so this is nothing but a dc battery or a dc supply so this is positive and this is negative now since this is positive can i draw positive plate of battery over here and since this is ground ground is nothing but negative potential so can we draw negative plate over here and connect this positive vcc to the positive plate and negative to ground okay similarly here this is positive vcc so we can draw positive plate over here since there is a ground over here this is negative and we will just connect these two parts so once we have formed these loops we simply have to apply kvl on the input side as well as on the output side since this is my input current and input voltage this is nothing but my input side this is nothing ic is nothing but my output current and vc is nothing but my output voltage so this is my output side so you only have to keep in mind that when you have to find out ic you have to apply kvl over here in the input loop okay you have to apply kvl here in the input loop to find out ic and when you are finding out vce you have to apply kvl here in the output side okay so we will be applying kvl in both of these loops let's apply kvl to the input loop so that we can find out ic now you may think there is no parameter ic over here so how will we get ic if we apply kvl to this input loop you should keep in mind if we ib and ic both are related if you remember in the previous video i told you all ic is nothing but beta ib plus beta plus 1 ic bo okay so basically this is nothing but leakage current or reverse saturation uh, current so this is very very small quantity so we can basically neglect it okay it is very small so we can say that ic is equal to beta i b okay so collector current is equal to beta which is amplification factor and ib which is your input current now if you apply kvl in this loop you can certainly find out ib and if you find out ib you simply have to multiply ib with beta and you get ic so that is what we want we have to find out ic which is your collector current which is nothing but the output current so let's apply kvl in the input loop okay so here you will have to see the direction of current you can see the current flowing over here is ib right so the current is flowing in this direction so we will apply kvl like this okay so first thing over here is nothing but vcc so vcc is positive so vcc then we have rb since this is positive this is plus minus so the this is nothing but negative ib into rb now when you are applying kvl it is nothing but kirchhoff's voltage law and if you know ohm's law v is nothing but i into r right so here we can see vcc is a voltage so we directly took it down we wrote vcc now next component here in this path is i rb and rb is not a voltage so rb you have to see what current is flowing through that resistor so current flowing through this resistor is nothing but ib so ib multiplied with rb is nothing but the voltage drop across this resistor so we will write that so you always have to consider the second sign so here we'll have to write minus ib rb okay the next component over here in this path is this voltage input voltage vbe so we will write that you have to consider the second sign which is negative so minus vbe 
what is the next component in the path we have we can see the current you are flowing flowing over here is ie but there is no resistor or anything present over here so let's leave it and then let's come down we can see we have come to ground since ground has come we will equate this equation to zero okay so this is the equation that you got by applying kvl to the input loop so now we are interested in finding out ib so that we can find ic so let's take ib term on one side so we have ib rb it is equal to vcc minus vbe and ib is equal to vcc minus vbe upon rb so nothing but ib so we know that ic is equal to beta ib therefore ic is equal to beta multiplied by this term that we have found out so it is nothing but vcc minus vbe upon rb okay so we have found out the output current ic by simply applying kvl to the input loop to find out vce which is the output voltage we will have to apply kvl in the output loop over here so again we'll have to see the direction of current so the current over here is ic which is flowing downwards so this is how we will apply kvl so this is our loop so the very first thing over here is nothing but uh, vcc which is positive so first let me write apply kvl in output loop so the first thing is vcc which is positive so plus vcc next thing in the path is this resistor r again this is not voltage so v voltage is nothing but i into r so the voltage drop across this resistor is nothing but this resistor resistance multiplied with the current which is flowing through that resistor so ic into rc and again if this is positive this is plus minus so second sign which is negative so we will write minus ic rc next component in the path is this voltage vce so the second sign is minus so minus vce and then we have no component and then we reach ground so ground is nothing but zero so let's write equate this equation to zero so this is the equation we only need vce which is the output voltage so let's take it on one side so vce is nothing but vcc minus ic rc so this is the equation we easily found out vce so this is what we needed so previously by applying kvl in the input loop we found out ib and by finding out ib we found out ic because ic is nothing but beta ib so we found out ib and then we multiplied it with beta and we got ic which was the input current the first thing that we had to find out and the second thing that we had to find out was the output voltage which is nothing but vce so by applying kvl to the output loop we found out vce so this is the second thing that we wanted and that is done so in the biasing techniques in all the three biasing techniques these are the two parameters that you will have to find so this is all for this video tutorial i hope you found this helpful in the next tutorial i will be showing you all self biasing technique thank you